Hello, I believe that we are live and if you're out there, if it's not too early, um, can you help me with a comment uh, to let me know if you can see the video all right? I'm just looking at my phone watching the video and it, it was like showing some kind of glitching, but I think I'm getting a better feedback at the moment. So, thank you so much for being here. This is Erika Kasab. Today we're gonna be sculpting a Zelda fan art. Uh, because I I guess that I need an excuse to do something Zelda related, something that I quite liked. And it was the 35th anniversary. And so, why not? I'm just gonna switch to... This is screen here on the top right above me. You can see the sketch that I made for this, so you have the idea of what, what's behind this. And just shortly, Michael is gonna join us. He's gonna be around for to help me out with any question in case I miss the chat and stuff. So I guess we'll get started. I uh, just have a regular. A uh, new scene in Nomad, but I don't like to start with this because this is not a perfect sphere. It's like a rounded box, so I'm just gonna start with an actual sphere and I guess I should make the project. Let's just call it Link Fan Art. There we go. Just regular sphere, nothing special. Um, perspective view, yep, we definitely want that. And let's add some of my reference over here. I'm just gonna import this real quick. I prefer this file. Let's change the scaling. So it's got a sketch in three quarters for reference and I try to do this orthographic view, try to keep it the proportions as um, accurate as possible, try to keep things aligned, but it might not be very exact. So I'm not gonna be very strict in following it exactly. And I recently came up with this idea when setting up my reference of using the camera views. So I'm gonna call this one front and I'll try to align my sphere to that. Let's try to get a rough position for it and now I'm just gonna save this so it doesn't matter where I move my camera, I can just very easily go back to that. And the same, snap to the side view, try to align it around here. I might have to adjust this later. But this is just gonna make things a bit faster. Add a view, let's call it side. And there we go. And I need to validate this sphere. So I, as always I start in low resolution and I work with multi-resolution levels. I'm gonna move just really fast into an orthographic view and make a cut on the sides. Push this size of the sphere, actually a bit in an angle, to create the temples like this, side planes of the head, which are flatter. And the angle is because that's what I can see on the design. If I line it up, it probably would have been a good idea. Oops. So let's just try to get this shape. 
So right now I'm just focusing in getting the overall shape, the silhouette of the head. I'm not gonna do yet the bottom, I wanna get more like the cranialness. Let's look at it on the side. You probably can go a resolution level down to make this uh, easier to me. Yep, this looks alright. And now with a mask, I'm gonna bring this down. Just selected the area that's gonna become the jaw and with the gizmo I'm pulling it down and let's move this to start getting that shape more accurately. Helps to use relax because all of these polygons are getting quite stretched. looks really weird from a front view. Oh yeah, he has no cheekbones whatsoever. Alright, here we go, that looks better. And in case you're wondering for this uh, quick design that I made, um, I was just experimenting with uh, more manly features for Link. Sometimes I feel like he is too skinny looking to delicate looking so i was like hmm, what would a i mean he's a warrior he's like exercising all the time he is doing lots of activities that would him give him muscles so i thought why not so just carry on this simply working with the drag tool drag or move are very similar uh, the moment in this stage is not really gonna make a difference which one I use when I'm using uh, higher um, Meshes more resolution with lots of polygon. That's when it's gonna make a difference. That's when I'm gonna go for drag Because mm, I, I'll show you later, but move is gonna Leave some marks that I don't want that are gonna look quite artificial Let's go even higher resolution level and start refining this even more. Feel free to ask me any question of the of how, uh, how I did something, any um, tool related or yeah just feel free to do so. I'm happy to share anything about my process. I'm gonna hide this for a second so I can see better. And I'm just gonna round from the back the cranial mask. So I want this to be smaller. I want this curve in comparison to the chin, which is quite wide. And I can see there's a couple people already watching. So I would love to hear about you. Um, maybe tell me where you're watching from. I am currently based in New Zealand. But I know that we have audience from all over the place. I'm actually Mexican. So if there's any Latin American friends out there, I would be happy to hear from you. I mean, just from everyone. I'm just saying Latin America because that's my home, but you know. Do you have comments on? Uh, yep, I can see the comments on my phone. Oh, they're coming through. They're not coming through? No, they're coming through. You're getting comments. Oh! You're not them. No, I'm not seeing them on my phone. That's sad. Oh yeah, I just updated. Sorry about that. And I see a question from Roughnecks. Hey Erica, is there a specific tool for Nomad similar to Extrude to Blender when you just point out the vertices 
at the very end of a primitive. Um, there is not really an extrude in Nomad because it's just sculpting, it's not really any box modeling. So there are workarounds that you can um, kind of simulate and extrude, um, maybe through a mask. Like I would um, isolate some vertices and if I were to activate dynamic topology um, it will kill multi-resolution but it lets me do operations for example with drag in which it's gonna add geometry to that original mesh. So I know it's not quite extrude but in some cases it could work. Um, I'm gonna go back because I want my multi-resolution. Another thing, I guess that it could be um, maybe adding yet another primitive that you want to join to this as if you were, I don't know, extruding some of these top planes and selecting both and then voxel merge them. Again, not quite what, what an extrude would do, but this is how I would solve the lack of extrude, if that makes any sense. And just looking at the comments to see what else I missed. I see... Hello, Mr. Subsound90. Subsound, that's a cool name. Spruce from Wisconsin. Ooh, how cold is it over there? I had a cousin that lived in Milwaukee for a couple of months and he's been like moving all over the place because of his work. But he did say that it was quite cool over there. Of course, hello Roughnecks. Um, JK as well. And uh, you'll probably notice that Michael is now here. Oh yeah, he also made a comment about it. All right, let's carry on with this cult. It's gonna bring back my reference. And maybe add even one more resolution level. And snap my camera from the side. If you missed anything, any part of the process and you have a question, feel free to let me know. And also if you ask a question and you're not satisfied with the answer and you have like follow-up um, questions or anything also please do let me know. Just taking a moment to look at the comments. Ah, I see Roughnex is trying to do a house and environment. Yeah, I, st I haven't worked yet um, non-organic, more like, yeah, like environments, like buildings, but yeah, I would prefer if there was more um, hard surface stuff. There, it became a bit better with the update that would let you do more accurate cuts with the trim tool, but still not quite the best, but um, I mean it's getting there, so far it's working, um, it's updating really often, so who knows what we're gonna have in around maybe six months. Okay, so now I'm realizing that I wanna make the widest part of the yaw, like way back, like right now it's too much in the front. Like that wide area should be more around the corner of the yaw, so I'm just gonna flatten this down, trying to get like this side plane of the face, which is long and fairly flat. I guess that it could be a bit rounded depending on um, the tissue there. But the thing is that it's a big plane on the side. Kind of like that, it creates like a rhythm that goes towards the ear. I 
can see uh, John Slaughter from Indiana. Yeah, hello, John. And Mr. Subsound is from Colorado. Nice. I haven't been to Colorado or Indiana. Unfortunately, and I guess that I'm not going anytime soon. Yeah, so many places to visit just in the US, it's quite vast. Oh, let's see how this looks like with the reference. And compare this, yeah, after all those changes, I lost my silhouette, so I'll have to bring that back. Maybe low resolution level, lower. So it's easier to manipulate. And side view, like even if I try to keep it accurate to these references, I still need to look outside of them because it might look okay in, in them in that specific context, but you gotta make it feel right from every single point of view. And here is a little bit like trusting our ability to recognize humans. Um, we all see humans every single day and we know what uh, what looks right or wrong so it might be difficult to put into words this feeling the shapes flowing correctly but it's kind of like trusting this knowledge that we have just because we see humans every single day Ah, oh, that starts to feel a bit better, like it's a shape. Also need to flatten down a little bit over here. Yeah, this stage might not be very exciting, but it's good foundations to make a better character later. If I can, if I rush it, then it's gonna look bad. And I have definitely a bunch of bad works, some bad attempts that didn't go as I intended. Some really creepy looking faces. So let's not rush it. I'll try to keep it entertained by by talking with my silly joke sometimes. But yeah, Michael's in the back. We were sick, not COVID, just a regular um cold. So we might do a bit of coughing or sneezing. We're much better now, but you know, it's just still part of the the process of being sick. The sneezery. Um, I see you coming from JK. The inflate brush is being a bit weird. Yes, I believe that it's been broken since the update 1.4. Yeah, it hasn't been updated yet. So yeah, I've always also experienced that that sometimes like it like just does some unexpected all over the place and sometimes it works. By the next uh update it should be fixed. I'm imagining that that's going to be really soon. Honestly, I thought it was going to be a bit sooner, but you know, no matter it's developed by only one person. So there's only so much a person can do, it's already quite impressive what he has achieved. But yeah, that's the thing. Inflate seems to be broken at the moment. Alright, now I can start defining the face a bit more. I'm gonna get this area, like the brow line. And to do so, I'm gonna use crease and I'm gonna push. Nope, this is pulling. Yeah, pushing this down, especially because he had like such a prominent brow ridge. Somewhere around here. And now the pinch is too intense here, so I'm gonna lower it down. Yeah. And let's watch from the side. Yep, that looks pretty decent. So let's just exaggerate this a bit more. 
maybe again from the front and crease again so when I use that uh, pinch force here for the crease it means that it's gonna work less like a magnet because right now the well the crease to what it does is that it pulls or push um, the geometry but it also works like a magnet so it's gonna pull together the topology which sometimes is desirable and sometimes it may be a bit annoying just so you know what is the nature of the tool and I see another comment from Sigit Satria? Satria? I hope I'm pronouncing that all right. I never pronounce things right. I'm Mexican and so my mind is constantly just thinking in a Spanish pronunciation. But still, hello! It's good to see you here. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to get the depression created by the orbit for the eyes, this part of the skull that goes down and just a regular clay brush pushing this down this is where it starts to... it's um, a stage that looks weird because it looks a bit alien, a bit like a skull and I'm sure that there might be people that will um, look at this and be like, ooh, like that looks creepy, like it's probably not really good at this. Um, I don't I'm not necessarily saying they're a really good sculptor, I definitely have a lot to learn, but yeah, it's just a part of the process that will look creepy. Mm. And just gotta roll with it, keep focused on the objectives, which right now is building good volumes. I'm not looking for pretty things at the moment, that's gonna be a later stage. And just working a bit on the cheekbone area, this part. You can feel it on your face, it's a hard bone, it protrudes out. So I'm gonna make sure that is there. I have a tendency of making really round cheekbones or no cheekbones on my characters, so I'm aware that it's something that I need to work on to make them look better. So let's look at it. Oh, more model, less reference. There we go. Uh, just making the surfaces flow a bit nicer between smooth and flatten Fi I find like flatten is a really good tool to also smooth down surfaces while giving them some shape now pinch you cannot see a lot what it does unless you have the wireframe on but this one makes no changes to the geometry except that it brings all the vertices together it's the magnet crease wheel is different because it pushes up or down but pinch doesn't so pinch is gonna be quite good for enhancing corners like what we have and around here the top of the orbits of the eyes and he has really prominent eyebrows so that's gonna be an important feature trying to get the shape of the glabella, this like trapezoid shape that starts connecting the brow to the nose. Let's see, side view. I might have to update this side. Uh, that nose, it's a bit too low. So just fixing the silhouette. And this was not ideal. I need to even this out. Maybe relax a little. And nope. 
smooth a tiny bit. And let's start blocking out the rest of the volumes, maybe put in a neck and just a cylinder and let's bring down its size. Let's try to place it. It's got a bit of a wide neck. Shorter, let's line it up to the reference so it's a bit easier. Yeah, it's not that wide. It is taller for sure. And I'm really gonna bring down the topology. So I want it round, so the X division, that's fine if it's a bit high. We can leave it probably around here. But the Y division, that's where I want maybe three divisions. So it's way easier to manipulate. If you tap on the numbers, you can do the input of the specific numbers, so that also helps. So this is what it looks like, like a super low resolution neck. But now, let's look from a side view. I can do a mask selection and I believe I'm still in, oh no, I'm fine, in the right. For example, I'm gonna mask that bottom and I'm gonna blur by mask. The blur is fine inside the settings here at the very top. Here we have clear and vert blur sharpen at the top, or with this side mask button. If you hold it down, we can do a couple gestures. So I hold it down, I tap a masked area, and it blurs, so it's way faster. Now I can do this sort of modification that's gonna affect very slightly with a tiny fall off. And it's a process of masking, unmasking, modifying here, trying to get this like a nice curve for the neck. Okay, unmasking. Maybe widening this a little bit. The neck like tapers in and out. So I want to try to get that change again a mask I try to get this the modifications with move and drag are also gonna be way easier because having low topology it's less things to move I'm gonna do a bit of a relax because this uh, is just flowing a bit weird Let's look at it from the side and actually place it where it goes. Yeah, I can see here that I'm not quite where I need to be. So yeah. let's push. Yep. What iPad model are you using and which storage size? Uh, what iPad model I am using? This is the first generation iPad Pro, the 12.9, I believe that is. Uh, the first one that would support the pencil also, this is a first generation pencil. And I believe it's 132 gigs of storage. So it's a bit of an older model, but it still works very well. If you have the chance, because they are quite expensive, but to invest on a on more storage for your iPad, I think it's worth it, definitely. But I also have mixed feelings because I definitely feel like it might be quite overpriced, and you might get some Android tablet with better capabilities for a way lower price. So yeah, yeah. I'm constantly terrified that my iPad is gonna stop working, cause yeah, that's what Apple does. Like when things are getting older, they just stop making 
good things stopped oil updating and yeah I don't really want to buy an iPad anytime soon okay let's look at this from a front view and here's where it might not exactly line up because I didn't try to make this reference perfect but I think the front one I can trust more than this side of you so I'll try to follow it a bit more of course I can subdivide anytime whenever I start to need more a resolution let's look at this and I'm gonna try to push a little bit this neck try to creating like a bit of a, a V rhythm because we have two muscles that run down into the clavicle so it's like a very uh, visible volume maybe I can try to achieve it still quite low resolution so that's gonna limit me but I can try it's a muscle that starts underneath the ears course try to get a bit of the Adam's apple because I'm going for um, manly look so that's gonna be important um, I think for now that Nick looks alright so maybe let's try to do something more interesting like the eyes and for the eyes I like to use a UV sphere because it has like actually a round uh, topology. So what I do is put the slider to rotate it 90 degrees towards the front. Maybe let's bring down this resolution level. Um, I haven't badly validated it yet. And here inside the topology menu I'm gonna tap on mirroring. So I have two of them. And I see that there's another bug here that is going to be fixed once I validate. It doesn't really affect much what I'm working on at the moment. It looks kind of funky, but it's okay. Let's line it up to my front. And he's probably going to have some weird size of eyes because he's quite stylized. I think somewhere around here. What brush do I use for building volumes? Um, I lean to using clay a lot. Clay... Uh, well, I talked about this on like some videos in which I say that clay is good for the earlier stages and brush is better for the latter stages. This is mainly because clay leaves a lot of texture I can probably do an example to show you, but I actually need a high resolution. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, clay leaves like a lot of brush stroke. I can also hide this. Texture. Which might not be very desirable in latter stages. I can sort of help this if I change my alpha to nothing. It's gonna be a little bit softer volumes. But also clay like can build indefinitely. Like if I just keep making stroke, 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 it keeps building up volume. Brush doesn't have this activated. Like brush has a limit of how much volume I can build. I think that's where it stops. And you can see like it's way less than with clay. I can fix this if I go into the stroke menu and activate accumulate stroke so then that's gonna make it build volume like crazy with no limit whatsoever but I would say that the most important difference let me add some texture to show you here it's like um, uh, later on the stage of uh, sculpting 
and I already made some texture for whatever reason and if I use clay that is gonna destruct my texture like I lose it whereas if I use brush that it's gonna push it up or down and it's not gonna kill all this texture that I made so that's what I go for like on earlier stages clay and then I use brush um, to be fair I also use a lot move and drag to shape those volumes to build volumes up or down even though they're not exactly the, the same thing but they're quite helpful I hope this answered your question if it didn't please let me know and I can elaborate a bit further and going back I'm gonna activate the outline because I'm gonna start like working with different meshes and I get confused what I'm working on. Yeah. So just trying to shape a bit better this to fit now the eyes that are there. And a cool feature about the eyes being UV masks, UV mask, UV sphere, sorry. Is that I can use this to block in like the pupil and the iris, which I like very much. It kind of makes the sculpt look less alien on this original stages. I'm gonna kill one of the eyes for a second with a trim. And I just wanna make a little rotation because the when I just painted pupil like I did, it starts to look like cross-eyed and I want to just avoid that a little bit. So I'm just fixing one eye. It's easier to do with one eye instead of two at the same time. And then I'm just gonna mirror it. But yeah, now it looks a bit less cross-eyed, a bit more natural. Okay. Maybe I can block in the nose, bring back my reference. So, probably a cylinder would do the trick. Uh, let's see how it works. There's not really like right or wrong, it's based on the needs of your model. Sometimes you want to start with a cube, sometimes you want to start with a sphere. Are you in perspective mode? Yes, I am in perspective mode. And Michael is asking me because I very often make the mistake of working in orthographic view, which it's not always ideal. Because once you change to perspective view, like there's a different distortion and you thought that things were looking right, but they weren't really. Uh, any plans for making a hard surface tutorial? Oh, I, yeah, that's actually a very good idea. Sculpting a small robot. I feel not very smart for not thinking about it. Um, yes, I plan to do a um, hard surface um, tutorial. I need to practice before doing so, because, um, I don't know, I, I find it particularly difficult and I try to um, improve my skills before trying to teach them and hard surface it's not very natural for me if that makes any sense but yeah I'm definitely working on that I was thinking maybe mixing the triplanner tool with trim some of this slicing um, operations that there are in Nomad Uh, at the moment, I'm actually focusing on completing a realistic phase uh, premium course. So it's longer than the videos that we publish here on YouTube and it goes more in depth. I should complete that on this week and afterwards I'll be back to working on Nomad videos for the enjoyment of everyone. 
and I was trying to smooth down the cylinder but I haven't validated it so that I guess was a problem and I should be alright now yeah yeah this cylinder seems to work alright I need to shape that bottom of the nose so I wonder what's gonna happen if I try to push these corners and then the center. Here's where I really wish there was an extrude tool because I would just select that topology in the bottom of the nose and then bring out that area but no extrude. So let's just try to sculpt it. Yeah, hard surface comes a bit more difficult to me. Um, it might have to do that most of my experience has been with characters, not so much with props or things with hard surface nature. So I do struggle with it. But it's good to know that um, that's what you want to see on the channel. Like all this kind of feedback is really useful. So any kind of requests you have of things you want to see in the future, feel free to share them. Uh, We're more than happy to hear what you want to hear because, well, like, yeah, this channel is for you. Like I can try to guess what topics are going to be popular or not, but you are the ones who know what you need and where you want to improve. So it's plenty of help if you share it with me. With us. So Michael's also here and he's got plenty of insights. He's not a nomad user but he is very um, like fluent if that's the right word in Seabrooks. Like he knows where everything else. He knows um, how to move very naturally on this software and there's a lot of similar things between a Nomad and ZBrush. And we have more people connected uh, than before, so if I hadn't say hi, it's good to see you here. Um, just blocking this character that you can see on top of me. It's just a quick sketch that I made of a link try to do something a bit different. I feel like he's always he always looks like so tiny and a bit weak for the kind of warrior that he is. So I tried to make a more manly, muscly depiction of the character. And this stage is still quite uh, alien looking. But I'm just working on a good foundation to then work on the organic volumes and more difficult things. Okay, so how long should you be spending on your sculpts? Uh, what would be acceptable instead of trying to overwork a model? Gee, this is hard. Um, I think that you should worry when you're working over and over on the same thing. Like if I uh, spend half an hour working just on the cheekbones that's probably overworking and not being very efficient that's probably when you should be asking if there's a different way that you can solve that specific problem um, I can't say like if you work for the whole model in two hours then that's a problem because that's gonna be different for, for each person and as you get more experience you're gonna get faster but yeah, it's always, I would always compare it to yourself, like on the past model, how much time do you spend? And on this new model, um, is, is your time improving? Did it get worse? Or if it's a completely different task that you're working on, that also is going to be relevant. So yeah, honestly, it's a bit of a tricky question. <laughs> and I hope this is somewhat useful. I see that Spruce says, I've always been curious about how to make eyes and the eyelids and such. 
Looking forward to that part. Oh yeah, yeah, I quite like that stage. Um, I have, uh, we have a video on sculpting eyes. So um, I go like into the details of the anatomy, the structure and all that, if you want to check it out. But yes, I'm definitely gonna go into that soon. I'm just trying to get more detail areas of the face, like even though like my face is covered with skin and muscles, there's part of the bones that are visible that you can even feel, like these are the subcutaneous areas, and these include the chin, the cheekbones, this top uh, with the brow ridge, and even though the teeth are covered, they push out all of this skin and muscle, so that's what I'm, I was just working at the moment, like this... Um, area that protrudes and that protrusion is going to look very different on each person. I kind of designed it to be quite flowy, quite stylized on this reference. But I'm fairly happy with it. I'll adjust those silhouettes a bit later. But yeah, I guess then we can move on to the eyelids and such. Uh, working with the eyes of course means working with the areas around the eyes. So this, the tra trapezoid shape underneath the brows, that's known as the glabella, that's going to be a big part of what gives character to the eyes. Um, maybe push out this orbit that goes a bit more towards here, towards more the, like the corner. Um, yeah, something like this. What sort of setup am I using for the streaming? It's OBS, I don't know. Um, what sort of setup are we using for the streaming? Just OBS and YouTube, basically. Yeah, right. yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, Derek. Hi, Derek. Um, yeah, it's just OBS, uh, it's free software, you, you, you connect it to YouTube through some keys, some codes, and black magic, I suppose. <laughs> and there I can choose what I want to show on the screen, so I can choose like, it's my whole face, or if I want to put an image and such. It's quite um, easy to use, honestly, and it's free, so that's great. Alright, the eyes. I haven't named any of this, which I should have, so I'm going to call this eyeball and I'm going to make a duplicate, which is going to be the eyelids right now. Just this, just like before, I'm going to cut one of them with a trim tool because it's easier to work with only one. And I can kill the paint because I don't need it. So first thing that I want to do for the eyelids is the duplicate, make it a bit bigger to get the thickness of the eyelids. Don't make your eyelids thin as paper, um, unless that's like a specific style choice, but don't make it by mistake. It's kind of like what I mean. And I'm going to bring my uh, rotation to zero. This is just the gizmo uh, tools and point it back up. Let's isolate this. Move really quickly into an orthographic view and I just want to flatten down the bottom. So I'm going to use project tool line here I want to put a rotation step of 90 degrees to make sure that it's perfectly horizontal and push it. It just only like like literally push as if I was uh, flattening a ball of clay. So that's gonna be my top eyelid and I can isolate this too. And it's not in the correct place, so I want to try to put it 
in the very center I might have done messed up something here for which I didn't place it in the center but yeah let's try to have it there now I'm gonna move my pivot to the bottom and make sure it's also in the center and once it's there with a regular rotation I can open this eyelid up oh, um, Derek was asking about how if it runs on PC and iPad um, you're using just an interface cable from your iPad to your laptop right? yeah, yeah my I'm mirroring the screen of my iPad into my laptop it's just a cable and it connects it like as an external video capture but you can definitely stream from the iPad I'm not sure if there's OBS for iPad I haven't looked but there's other tools that you can use to stream directly the screen it's a bit more complex on the computer like you have more uh, freedom of putting images and the video at the same time so that's why I prefer the computer Sorry, I missed your question. <laughs> and um, how much time does it take you to sculpt a full character without clothing, which is something you just did recently? So uh, full character without clothing. Depends kind of on the yeah. style as well. It does depend if the style is um, simple or more realistic. Obviously, more realistic is going to take more, more time. But... Uh, oof, I don't know, I want to say maybe it took me around five hours to sculpt with detail a character with like with the detail head and a somewhat realistic body but I honestly didn't time it so I could be telling something that's completely wrong um, well going back to the eyes that's pretty much how I do the eyelids and I can duplicate this oh yeah this is actually a quick duplicate now uh, here on the side uh, ah no it shows it's I, I can't quite point it out I, I don't like that there's not a pointer but there is a clone quick button on the side so if I press it it makes a super fast duplicate, which is really cool. So I no longer need to go into a menu. So actually, I'm just gonna go back to where I was. I wanna have this eyelid without any movement. And I need to set the pivot. And once it's there, I'm gonna duplicate right away. And with that pivot in place, the duplicated eyelid moves the way I want it. So now I have both. And some adjustments, because I again missed the center, but that's fine. And now just kind of like rotate it, kind of close it. This guy has like very stylized. Um, eyes so this is more like the way that I saw realistic eyes so let's see if this kind of makes sense I kind of start to see the shape of the design now so it will work I think that it will work I'm just gonna mirror those now that now that I like them yeah I kind of start to see like that expression of being mad Uh, yeah, when I'm not live streaming, um, the time, yeah, yeah, explaining of course takes more time, but I, w yeah, I would be confident between five and seven hours doing that whole body sculpt. I don't know if that's a lot or not. When I say it out loud, it sounds like a lot, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of like in the process of also getting experience. I, I don't have years of sculpting. I did sculpting in university, got mad at it because I had a bad professor and then never sculpted. And I just recently started sculpting again uh, when Nomad came out. So, 
so I'm using a lot of my illustration knowledge and try to apply it on it. Yeah, I guess I should block in the ears now. Uh, just not very happy with how the jaw looks like. So just some adjustments here. Kinda wish this flew nicer, like I'm trying to get a nice silhouette. That's also a good use of this outline that you can define. You can judge your character with like the flow of this silhouette. Another way to see a silhouette is to change your madcap into a perfectly white madcap. So now you're not looking at anything but silhouette. So if the design doesn't work in silhouette, it's not gonna work with details. And in case you were wondering, this purple madcap, it's my favorite madcap. It's a madcap that I made, that I painted. Um, Michael and I made a bunch of madcaps. Um, we have them on Gumroad and Patreon. Uh, we actually made three of them for free. Um, Michael, can you help me? I'll post in that link of those three madcaps. Um, in case anyone is interested. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. He's working on more stuff at the moment while he is helping me out over here. Um, I guess we should block in the ear. And again, let's go for a sphere. The good old sphere, it's usually very um, easy to manipulate. Let's move on to my side view. Again, I'm gonna work with one and then I'm gonna mirror it, so I don't have to worry about it. Let's try to get the whole shape of the sphere. On the videos that I, on the video that I made on the sphere, I go like each part of the spheres of the ear separately. But I, maybe I can do it a bit faster here. And this is gonna be tricky because I know that the design that I made from the side view to the front view really make no sense in ear-wise. <laughs> so I actually like way more the silhouette from the front. So let's listen to that. Uh, um. yeah, I kind of like like those uh, long protruding ears better than the ones that are like flat against the skull. And yeah, Michael just shared the link. So in case if you're interested in the whole set of madcaps, it's there, it's 39 madcaps. Uh, or if you just wanna try three for free. There you go. Will I be able to get the hair? Um, I can start blocking it. I did try to prepare. I can also show you other tests that I made for hair. I'm definitely not gonna finish it, unfortunately. But I can show you the start. And as for here, I think that Nomad can be quite limited still. Honestly, I use more like a combination of Blender and Nomad. Like I try to get the blocking in Nomad, but for the details and to keep low topologies, I go for Blender. I'll definitely do a video about it soon, once I finish that premium course on sculpting the head. That's gonna be the first video that I work on. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot of the key with hair is working with low resolution. Actually, let's just say this. And I'm gonna jump into that file, that test that I was working on. So here it is, is uh, 
so what I do for the base, like the base volume of the hair first, is take the face and I mask this area, like where the hair is gonna lie. So, doo -doo -doo, something like this. And once I masked it and it's all nice and pretty, right now it's like really rough, I'm gonna go into the mask menu and I'm gonna extract a shell. So here I'm gonna move this shell thickness. It's gonna depend on your model. I kind of want it smooth. I don't want sharp corners because it's here. And I need to make sure that the closing action is set on shell. So this kind of makes like this helmet with the shape of the bottom. So that's the very first part to start getting some volume. So that's this part. This is of course going to have a crazy high topology, it's a sculpting topology. But for making this sort of strands, I start working with a cylinder. It might not look like it, but this is a low resolution cylinder. Uh, yeah, it actually says here, cylinder, 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 cylinder. So it's kind of similar to what I did with the neck just now. Let me focus on this cylinder. It's super low resolution here, lower down. I try to keep it round. So division X, it's fine if it's a bit high. I uncheck constant density. But Y is where I want to go, really low. Maybe, yeah, like this, 4. I can probably lower the C divisions. And make this a bit longer. That might work. I wonder if I could lower the X. Yeah, this should work. And I'm gonna validate this. And first I wanna relax one of the tips. So uh, it's just a smooth tool set to relax mode. I wonder if I should have gone lower. Yeah, compared to this other ones, I should have gone way lower in subdivision levels. So let's do that, because the lower I go, the easier it is to manipulate. Yeah, it doesn't matter that it doesn't look round, it's okay. I can fix that later. Okay, again, I'm gonna try smoothing this out. Sorry if I'm moving too much the camera around, I hope I'm not making you DC with all these rotations. Let's actually solo this, so we are dealing with less things. And like before, I'm gonna start masking. So maybe I'm gonna mask that point, which doesn't look like much. Maybe blur a little. And pull it down. Uh, let's sharpen that mask. I don't quite like how it's working. Let's uh, pull it down. Uh, nope. I kind of lost my mask there. Let's try again. Yeah, this kind of helps me get that tip. It looks a bit weird because it's like this unusually low topology, but as I work it, it starts to look a bit better. So yeah, this is like my hair strand. Of course, this method works for really stylized hair for realistic hair, I probably wouldn't even model it. I would more go more for like hair simulations. But yeah, we can do this in Nomad, why not? Let's try to get this more natural looking. This tip more like this. Yeah, that kind of looks all right. How do I go into solo mode? Here in the bottom, uh, there is a magnifying glass that says solo. So whichever um, tool is chosen, whichever geometry, that's going to isolate it. 
if you cannot see the magnifying glass, you have to go into the interface menu and am I right? Yeah, where it says bottom buttons. <laughs> um, make sure you activate and uh, not lock. Which one is it? Oh no, I don't think you can deactivate it, so it should be there. And I can see that Reggie is here. Hi, Reggie. Happy to see you here. Um, okay, so I have my really rough hair strand. So I would probably use masking some of this to start to give it some shape. Blurring the mask is going to be quite helpful. So here's the blur because it starts to give like some fall off to that movement. Uh, it's not a very fast workflow, honestly. Because you have to like select and move, select and move. And you can make some of these changes with the move tool. Like to try to make it flow nicely. Um, I can try using inflate with inverted mode, but inflate at the moment is broken, so that's not helping me. If I wanted to make something thinner, maybe. Let's try with the mask and oh, this kind of works. A blurred mask and then using the gizmo. But yeah, so what I did was making like a base hair strand and then I started to duplicate it and modify it to try to get different shapes here for this area like the fringe area I, I i was actually going for like a um, link like um hairstyle here i kind of make like my base fringe and um bangs yeah fringe is like uk for this bit and um, bangs i guess is the american term well yeah so i made my base geometry and then I just duplicate it and make small changes and try to place it. So in essence that's how I would tackle here. I still need to work more like to uh, better this uh, technique. I don't think I have quite nailed it down. Uh, but uh, I would still think that afterwards I would mix it with blender honestly. But let me take maybe this and... Don't forget that you're sculpting uh, Zelda uh, like. Yeah, in case you missed it, I'm just quickly going into another model to show you how I would tackle her because I'm not gonna have enough time to finish the hair. And maybe if I wanted to make some detail on this hair, like try to add some texture, I would add some resolution levels and start to play with the crease tool. Maybe I would change this fall off to be a bit different. If you're curious about all like how to use this um, menu and what each thing does, uh, there's videos about it on the channel. I was working on a tool series to explain all of that. But kind of like that. So hopefully you find this useful. I'll make sure to make a video about it soon. If you if you have questions or like specific things that you want me to tackle about here, let me know so I can include those on the video. And I'm not gonna save this, I'm just gonna go back to this Link character that I was going on. Oh, and thank you for the comment on the nose design. Let me just check the comments that I'm not missing anything. As pro a proficient Nomad user, what feature do you hope uh, development adds next? Thanks for the great content. Um, well, thank you for the nice comment. Seven faces. Oh, 
What does it look like? It's like sounds like a biblical angel with seven faces. Are you a biblical angel? Um, what tool do I want to see next? Oh, there's plenty of you. I think something retopology wise. I would like to have more control topology, like edge flows. I know that that's probably gonna take a long time because only Seaverse can do that, and it's like black magic how it works. But yeah, I just want to have um, edges where I want them instead of having them all over the place, like here. Um, I feel like that helps you having so many polygons. It gives you way nicer corners. And I started, I, I learned 3D through box modeling, so maybe my mind is more set to think like that. But yeah, I would actually like to hear that from you guys. Like, what sort of features you want to see next on Nomad? Don't forget that the forums are open for everyone and to send their requests. And the developer is quite active there, so. I am, um, for example, I'm really happy that for the trim tool, when it's in lasso mode, it didn't used to have the lazy rope stabilizer, and I was the one who suggested that, and now it's there. So it's like, yay, I had a good idea. Blender tutorials. Um, I've only made so far one Blender tutorial. But it proved to be a bit complicated because my computer is old, so I get a lot of lag when I try to record and stuff. So I feel not very happy about that. It just makes things difficult. So maybe when I have access to a better computer, I will. Um, I'm not completely close to, to the idea of working on it right now, but yeah, the moment is just a bit difficult because it's a painful process and it takes ages to edit and produce and everything. And there's only so much time in life. For this year, I'm gonna remesh it in low resolution just because that, that stretch topology that I have was not helping me at all. And I'm gonna mask the inside and try to push it down. Uh, uh, um, just blurring that mask. There is a video on the masking tools coming out on Monday for the US time. It's Tuesday for us in New Zealand. But yeah, like the day that I usually publish videos relating on tools, the one that's coming up is on the on masking. So hopefully that's gonna be also useful. Masks are honestly masks are the best. Okay, and um, I'm encountering a problem that happens when you have really thin um, geometries that you try to do like a sculpting operation on the front and it starts to affect the back. So if you have this problem, go to your stroke menu and activate front facing vertex only here almost at the very bottom. That way it's gonna ignore the back of your geometry and it's gonna sculpt only the things that are pointing towards your camera. Sometimes that can give you some weird results, so be aware of that in case you activate it. I only use it when I have like really thin topologies, like here in the tip of my ear is starting to get, um, yeah, like just too close to the back wall, so that kind of creates a problem. Oh, Boro is here, he is my compa from Mexico. Hello Boro. 
I'm glad to see you around here. I've been stalking you on Twitter. Not in a creepy way, I promise. Well, maybe in a creepy way. No. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, low poly modeling, I agree. JK, low poly would be so great. But, I mean, sculpting like this is really cool. I'm just, my brain is used to low poly. So that's why I miss low poly. But maybe one day. I don't think it's coming soon because it's not the, uh, quite the priority of the developer. of the developer. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I lose my words in English sometimes. Sorry about that. My native language is Spanish, so my brain constantly is like floating on different languages. And I get lost in the sea of languages, and then I say nothing. Like, I just go to Michael and I go like... Bup, 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 and he's like, what? So he's used to that, but you guys are not. Yay, compa! Uh, compa, compadre is um, Mexican slang for friends for bro, I guess. <laughs> uh, I think this ear works, so let's put it. It kind of starts to look less alien, a bit more like Link now. Let's put it here and I need to fix yet again that jawline. That's not ideal. And I'm probably gonna fix it from this front view and then it's gonna look weird from another point of view. But oh well. Uh, let's block in the mouth. And just like I did for the ears, for the head, I think it's time to go a bit higher with resolution. So I'm gonna voxel still kind of low, just going a bit deeper. That looks alright. And now with crease, I'm gonna block in the mouth. Okay. And I'm gonna change my reference. I prepared another one in which I have these images but on the side. So I can have them more visible. But just yeah, I'm not. I, I guess that I'm not gonna line it up my model anymore to where I was. But yeah, still helpful. Just another way to look at your reference. Let's maybe try smoothing out some stuff. I don't want to lose that mouth. Uh, yeah, uh, I can see in the comments that Boro said that Comadre, that's the one for, for women. So Compadre, it's when you have your mates, your male mate. And Comadre is for the ladies, just in case you're curious. Um, I've been thinking, how would we go about modeling a wheel rim in Nomad? There's no radial symmetry. Yeah, I know, that's annoying! Um, I would probably you I would probably subtract geometries like if I were to make like a bunch of circle holes I would make the cylinder of the circle then I would place my pivot on the center of the main rim I would probably set a rotation angle and duplicate a bunch of those cylinders so they're like evenly spaced and then I would subtract them with more voxel merge. That is a good idea that I could incorporate in a video. Cause right now I, I suppose that it's like really abstract to just like say how I would solve it, but not really show it. Um, 
I also see a comment from ALLX, the Stargazer, cool name. Oh, thank you for your nice comment. I'm glad that you find the videos useful. I hope you also find this process useful. I've been stopping a lot to um, s describe different techniques, but hopefully you find them all useful. Let me try. Hopefully it's not too soon, but let's see what happens if I merge the head and the nose. Of course it's gonna look weird, so I need to first make some smoothing. I see a comment from Ronnie. Uh, he's a bit late, but it doesn't matter. You can watch this recording anytime later. It's good to see you here. Welcome, Ronnie. Ronnie! That's also a nice name. There's like a bunch of names that are unusual to me because they're not common in Spanish speaking countries, I guess. But I encounter, especially here in New Zealand, a bunch of names that are like, oh, that sounds like a. That sounds pretty. So uh, let's try to incorporate this nose. I don't know if it was the best choice to do the merging now. I did it because I want to show something less alien looking a bit more interesting while I'm sculpting for you, but we'll see if it was a good choice or, or it wasn't. Actually, I'm gonna do a save, but I'm gonna save this as, as a duplicate, so in case I messed up, I can go back to where I was. That is a good idea, to always make different copies of your, of your, work, of your work, because a file could get corrupted and you can lose everything you've, lost, you've done in the past. Or you could just make a mistake that you you want to go back to a stage where before that mistake, so that's why it's a great thing to do. Michael made a video essay on how Duke Nuke saved him by... Duke Nukem. What? Did I say it wrong? Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem? N-U-K-E-M. Whatever he said. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Duke. You always say Duke Nuke. Yeah, why do I always say it wrong? Well, how that um, nice video game taught him at a early age, at, at, at an early age to do saving iterations, which is a a practice that um, everyone that does digital things, I think, should have. Whether you're an illustrator, a sculptor, um, BFX um, designer, it works, it helps, it saves you from a lot of pain. Okay, now for the mouth, I'm just masking one area so I can sort of close it, isolating the other. And I want to flatten down a little bit the bottom, maybe with clay, build a little bit of volume for our lips. I don't want it to be like super realistic, it's more like a subtle animal-like features. And the same with the top lip. Uh, hopefully I'm not going too crazy here. Just check my silhouettes that are looking alright. Uh, maybe push this to its cylinder to protrude a bit more. Okay, just checking the comments. DPMN. I see. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sorry if I'm not. How capable is Nomad in terms of STL export for 3D printing? 
Um, well, Nomad can definitely export in STL. Um, here we have it on the scene menu. You can choose it here. And I think that the main thing for 3D printing maybe would be decimating your model, which you would do in the topology menu with dynamic topology. Here we can do like a global remesh. You can choose the amount of detail and set it to decimation mode so it reduces the, um, the amount of polygons. I honestly haven't done 3D printing with Nomad so I don't think that I can tell you more than that. Um, Michael has more experience than me with 3D printing but he hasn't really done it with Nomad. Uh, before he moved to New Zealand he had to sell his 3D printer so um, yeah we haven't done any experimenting for it. So sorry I can't give you any further information from that. Okay, I think I want to start working more on the eye area. So let's try to get this brow volume so he looks super manly. I'm not sure if I'm quite succeeding at that. I tend to do a lot of cutesy designs, so I think there's a part of my character design that always leans into that if I'm intending it or not. And let's give him a bit of a heavy epicanthic fold, this area between the lid and the top brow. So just trying to make heavy looking design choices in order to achieve this um, manly look again. And just mark a little bit this volume of the brows. And maybe soften these shapes try to make them start look more organic. I try to start very geometric to have more control but as I go further on the design that's when I start to introduce a bit more the organic shapes. And I will need to shape a bit better the eyelids and this area around because right now it's like really rough. And JK is asking, does Michael sculpt as well that what software? Um, yep, yeah, well, he just answered on the, <laughs> on the comments. His answer is probably better than I can say. Yeah, Michael is quite good with ZBrush. He knows where every tool is found. I haven't used ZBrush in a while, so I get lost. And I got mad at Seabrush. I had a bad professor and I got mad at Seabrush because of him. I know that it's not Seabrush fault, but I only went back to modeling when Nomad came out. Just shaping this more. So you can see like just switching around between tools. Don't feel like you need to switch between tools like there's plenty that you can do with just clay and sometimes it's overwhelming dealing with so many tools so once you're familiar with them is when I start like experimenting like going la 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 like this one this one this one this one otherwise like maybe just choose three and just get really good with those ones and then you can little by little um, start introducing new ones. That's what I've been doing. It's a lot of 
making mistakes. Just keep sculpting, honestly. The more you sculpt, the better. It's better to do a bunch of attempts than spending years in only one model. The more you do, the better. Little studies um, teach you more than spending hours in only one thing. I see the seven phases. I have used Noma to sculpt several miniature and it works great to export directly into Chitubox slash Cure. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can probably give better insights on that than uh, I can because you're, you're actually experienced. So that is great to hear. Yeah, like my understanding is that Nomad does well in preparing models for 3D sculpting. So I'm glad that you guys can help out each other in what I can't. Ooh, okay, let's move on a bit to the shaping the eyelids. That symmetry wasn't on, so that could have been a problem. So I can try to get a bit better the shapes. Push this a bit more towards the front. Also push this one a bit more towards the front. I need to look at every angle possible because it might look good from one, but it probably stopped working from another one. Try to get the shape of this expression. I would normally work in more of a neutral expression. Not quite like him that he is. Mad at Ganon. For being such an evil. But yeah, I'm not planning on animating this or anything, so I'm just gonna keep going with expression. This is probably a bit too in the back, so I'm just pushing it a bit. And before merging these volumes, I kind of want to make them flow um, as much as possible in this resolution. The top lid is typically uh, thicker than the bottom. This is not a realistic sculpt, so I don't think I need to be sub super obsessed in that sort of anatomy rules. Here we go. Well, so far I don't hate it, so let's do another save. And let's see what happens if I merge this eyelids. Maybe I need to work a bit more the epicanthic fold, the fold on top of the eyelids. It's just this is a really cool thing in the eye. Because it can look quite different between people. Uh, sometimes it's like really heavy here in this area and it overlaps the eyelid. Sometimes it's quite retreated and you see a lot of the silhouette of the top eyelid. Um, sometimes it starts quite low. It's just so many options. I talk about that on the eye video in case this all sounds like random things that I'm saying. It's just cool to experiment with it. And it tends to have more volume on the outside. So how about I try to push that? Yeah, just move it a little. The silhouette looks fine. It's just find a little 
Oh, that was probably too much. Maybe lower this intensity so the flat is not as intense. Yeah, just try to make this volume flow as nicely as possible before going further merging. I want to push this nose a bit more. I'm sorry, I think I just tapped the microphone. Hopefully it wasn't super loud for you. Yeah! If you just recently joined the stream, feel free to send us a comment to put a, something on the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know any question that you have. If you miss something, we're gonna have this recording available uh, later in the week, so you can review anything that you have missed. Um, have I tried sculpting environmental elements? Um, no, not yet. <laughs> but it has been requested. I know, like, I have like a maybe an idea of how I could tackle trees and rocks but yeah I, I really haven't yet said that I haven't tried I'll try to work on it soon okay let's I guess do a bold merge let's try to get everything together except for the eyeball and Let's just do a save in case I messed up. Let's make a new version in case it was just a silly thing to do. Let's go like this. Yeah. I could have done a bit of work with the neck, but that well. Just smoothing to get rid of this polygonal looking surfaces. And I'm gonna try experimenting with dynamic topology. So this is gonna change as I sculpt the topology. Like here it's simplifying it with smooth, which is kind of like a good idea because I wanna make this transition softer. Um, the transition from the corner of the yaw is not as straight as I've been working it. So this is gonna help me, yeah, make this more an organic thing. And just to let you know, we are maybe gonna keep going for another 20 minutes, so it doesn't become very long with little twigs that are not necessarily exciting to see. But still, feel free to share your questions and anything about the process or... I mean, if also if I said something that makes no sense or that there could be a better way to solve it, by all means. I am open to learning, I am open to listening to people with more experience than me. Are you going to post this on your Instagram or something when you're done? Uh, yeah, I can post the final result, why not? Yeah, I do want to play especially with the hair. Because I've only been doing blockings, but I want to see something more finished. Okay, let's try to get this area. Uh, the surface is gonna start to look all weird because dynamic topology works with triangles, which makes surfaces ugly, essentially. <laughs> so, yeah, in case you were wondering why things start looking funky. It is a useful tool, but um, we'll definitely have to take some time to fix that. 
because yeah like the edges look ugly it's just ugliness everywhere I guess I could increase a little bit the detail that maybe will help reduce that lo feo that's ugly in Spanish uh, yeah I also try to incorporate this in a more organic fashion so trying to get away from that alien uh, very stiff looking blocking like again I know that it's not uh, pretty it's not something that you really put in social media but it's important to take time to do good foundations because organic volumes are not gonna work on bad foundations it's like if you make a cake and undercook the inside but add some really nice meringue on top like it might look kind of good but when you try to eat it it's gonna be the worst I like making analogies and I like dessert so uh, yeah, I appreciate you like my analogy, Michael. Okay, I'm actually quite satisfied with those eyes. I'm, um, I'm always kind of concerned how to tackle um, stylized designs. Because I study a lot of realism, but then it's like, how do I apply that? And especially more in like, anime looking things is like yeah you want it to look anime like but also like that it works on 3d if that makes sense uh, I'm just trying to make this flatter looking based on my side view I might have to hide the eyeball for a while It's quite a challenge to bring things from 2D to 3D. That's why I try to make my... at least two views of my design. And the inside here doesn't really matter much. Because I'm gonna extract the shape for the eyes later. Is the purple matcap available in your free matcap packs? Um, actually, this purple one is just a different version of this green one. I just uh, changed the hue. Um, I don't. I'm not sure if this green one is available there in the free set. Um, do you think you can check that, Michael? Um, how do I check that? Oh uh, no, no, no. Actually, I guess I can check it on my computer. Just give me a second to see. Um, mm -mm -mm. It doesn't seem to be on the free set. What's on the free set? I got on the free set the one that looks like this. The one that looks like this. And this one, I believe. Yeah, that must be it. Yeah, I can't check very well because I don't have my um, all the files available at the moment. But yeah. I'm sorry if my answer is not very <laughs> exciting. Um well let's go back to the sculpting can just trying to get more detail. I wonder if it would work to make this. I don't think so. I think probably should just keep the eyes the way they are. 
They seem to be working fine. And yeah, it's still a bunch of tweaking at the moment. Just making it's working on soft tissue can be quite a challenge because there's no formula, like there's no way to say uh, like this is the right way or the right proportion because soft tissue looks very different on every individual. Oh god, I actually lost something that I liked here. Yeah, I was I had some nice corner that connected this up and I lost it, so I'm gonna try to bring it back. That was silly of me to lose. But I guess that's part of the process. Yeah, that corner looks nicer and then I'm just gonna even this out with flatten. Yeah, sometimes by creating corners with crease, because it's pinching what's around, it kind of leaves you like a hollow. So you would have you have to build it up again afterwards. So it can be useful at sometimes or very annoying at others. This looks a bit nicer. Yes. Yeah, Michael just shared again those links in case you want to check the the three madcaps or you want to check the whole set. And something about the set is that I made a oh, well, hold on just a second. Uh, yeah, not the mirroring. I made madcaps for painting like this one, which is part of the free ones. So be it being white, it's gonna be minimal the modification that it does to your to the colors that you add. So let's say let's make him let's choose like this for the skin, let's say, and force paint all. I'm um, just gonna add some markings like the fierce deity link that has like this thing over here and I don't know like just steely <laughs> um, thing. This madcap was designed to make this process easier whereas you probably notice that if I have any other madcap the colors look weird because the color of the madcap is like multiplying any extra colors so the colors look darker and tinted. So by having almost no hue in this madcap, it just makes the painting process way easier. And this one is available on the free ones. There's even more with other lightings, with qualities of surface, like having more reflective one, a cool light, Another type of cool light and very diffuse material. Ah, uh, yeah, we have some nice surf surface scattering. Yeah, this is sort of subsurface medium. There's another subsurface, a pink one. If you want skin effect. So yeah, that's really useful. Oh, it's really pink. I guess I can change to one of those madcaps. I, well, I'm, I'm actually like, I like this purple one because it lets me appreciate the volumes very well. <laughs> so I honestly rarely change much madcaps. It's still recommended to change madcaps while you're sculpting because it helps you judge your volumes a bit better. So you can see mistakes or, I don't know, things that might not be working as well. But I, I found this specific madcap to be quite good at showing um, the details in the volume. So 
still working on making your skulls look human. That's probably the hardest part. Yeah, yeah, I did mention on a past live stream that um, if you're just starting, don't get obsessed in trying to achieve likeness, like if you're doing a portrait or something. Because likeness is a more advanced skill and it requires a lot of tweaking and um, a deep understanding of anatomy and like as I was saying a bit earlier, the the soft tissue. So if you're just starting, aim for making human looking things. It's okay if they're generic humans, just make them feel human. Like, we know what humans are like. It's like ingrained in our DNA. Like, we can recognize humans. We see humans all the time. So, if something is, strikes you as weird, it's probably because you're not quite achieving the human look. So, try to figure out what about it makes it not look human. Are maybe the eyes too big? Uh, maybe are you missing the cheekbones? And once you have succeeded in sculpting a bunch of generic humans you you will start to gain a deeper understanding and actually be able to achieve likeness oh sam norwood it's great to see you around you took the time to send us some really nice comments yay oh yeah for those zelda fans out there um what's your favorite zelda mm, for me um, I love Majora's Mask, but Breath of the Wild was so, so good, so now my heart is divided between those two. I was a bit sad that there were no Breath of the Wild news in the last Nintendo, Nintendo Direct? Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo Direct. I'm just building up some volume for the cheekbones. I mentioned earlier that this is an area that I tend to really flatten down sometimes or make round and then my figures look weird because they have no cheekbones and just feel it. This is a strong bone that protrudes out. And I feel like it's also neglected when teaching a face. Like everyone is like eyes and noses and stuff, but yeah, like all of those features fit somewhere. And the cheekbones are a large area of the face and also give a lot of character to a face. Yeah, that looks a bit better. And since I'm in dynamic topology, when I zoom out and smooth, it should... Oh, am I still in dynamic topology? No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, that simplifies the topology. No wonder why I was struggling. Yeah, so this is a cool trick. If you are on more detailed stages and you're really struggling to smooth, the way to go is dynamic topology. Yeah, just defining this nose a bit more because I can see my reference is quite uh, more detail here, more defined shapes I suppose so maybe pinch would also be a good aid and the side I have a dynamic topology quick button so if I want to deactivate it uh, quickly and then go back to it that's the way to go You don't always need to add stuff. I can see Sam likes Breath of the Wild and Ocarina of Time. Yes, Ocarina is a good old classic. Um, Boro is Wind Waker. Yes, the Wind Waker. I actually have never finished Wind Waker. That's a bit sad. I, I when it was on the GameCube, I never could finish it because I didn't own a GameCube 
So one of my cousins would borrow me his GameCube, but yeah, it was like limited times. And I wasn't very smart at big games, so I got stuck very often. And then when it came out from the Wii U, it was my sisters and me, Wii U. But I left the country and she kept the Wii U. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> once again I could not finish it. And now I don't have a Wii U. The life, the sadness of life. Um, Minish Cap. I don't. I haven't played Minish Cap. Um, it's an old one. Yeah, it was it? It was for Game Boy, right? Game Boy Color, yeah, or GBI, I think. I can't remember. Yeah. I think it was GBI. Yeah. My favorite Game Boy one is Link's Awakening. That was such. A good games, like so emotional for such a, a small game. I don't know. I kind of, I guess it's not small. I just perceive it as like cutesy because it's Game Boy. But now I was like, oh, this is so good. Like, why does it make me feel so sad? Then I try to connect this rhythm with the nose to make it flow a bit nicer that's kind of the key with soft tissue like even though everyone has different shape of cheeks or laughing lines um, all of that soft tissue is connected to bone um, so the shape might look different for example, one of the shapes that I use very often is like a question mark that goes around the brows, then it describes the cheekbone and then it connects them out. You can actually see it on the reference. And some people have it like um, it opens up a lot more or it's sharper, even maybe more angular. But at the end, everyone has a question mark shape. So if you can find it, um, it makes your model feel more alive because these volumes uh, flow together, like everything in the face is connected together and that kind of brings life, if, if that makes sense. Uh, how are we doing timeless? Oh, actually. We are out of time, so I guess this is as far as I got. I didn't get to do the hair. Maybe I'll post a time elapse about the hair. I mean, I still need to do a proper um, tutorial about it. But yeah, thank you so much for coming. It's really nice to hang out with you guys to hear in real time your thoughts and engaging conversations. It's really a, a contrast from just doing the videos on my own and trying to figure out things in the loneliness of this space. Whereas here it's, I don't know, way more natural to actually have a conversation. So yeah, thank you so much for joining. Michael, do you want to say bye? Bye. <laughs> I'm just switching to the full screen so you can see my complete face but yeah we'll be posting this later on Friday I believe in, in the week if that's right uh, so you can what's that? yes okay yeah Friday so you can catch the recording in case you missed anything I'll post the final results including the hair uh, later on the week I'll try to put a community post here, place it on um, on Instagram, and I think the image is going all funky. I can see it on my on my phone. 